This is Ravi Gutetti and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 125 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of PCI of a left main quadrification lesion. The patient presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. He had previous coronary bypass with lima to LAD and vein graft to obtuse marginal, as well as multiple comorbidities. EKG showed mild changes with ST segment depressions, and the echocardiogram showed an ejection fraction of 40 to 45 percent with moderate pulmonary hypertension. This is the coronary angiogram. It does show a complex lesion of the left main bifurcation. There are actually four branches coming from the left main. There is the LAD that doesn't have significant disease, although there is a significant lesion in the mid LAD. There is a branch we called the superior ramus branch that also does not have significant disease. There is a branch called the inferior ramus, which had a 90% osteo lesion. And then there was the circumflex, which was a dominant vessel that had also a significant osteal stenosis. The left main per se appeared hazy, and there was dampening upon engagement of the coronary artery. There was a lesion in the mid-circumflex, and then there was a patent lima graft going to the mid to distal LAD. The patient was evaluated by the cardiac surgery team. However, given his previous coronary bypass, reduced ejection fraction and comorbidities, his risk for mortality and morbidity was high, and as a result, he was referred for high-risk PCI of the distal left main and the branches. Our initial plan was to use hemodynamic support prophylactically using an impeller CP device. However, upon uh, obtaining access, there was significant disease in the right common femoral artery as well as the left common femoral artery. And the plan changed because his wedge pressure was also normal at 15. So we decided to perform this case with standby hemodynamic support. We used a 7 French EBU 3.5 guide. We had to intermittently engage and disengage the guide to minimize dampening and potential hemodynamic compromise. We then used workhorse wires to wire into all branches, the LAD, the superior ramus, the inferior, ram the inferior ramus, which was challenging to wire, as well as the dominant circumflex branch. After wiring all the branches, the question is now, what is the strategy for the quadrification lesion? The LAD and the superior ramus did not have significant disease, therefore our plan was to not treat them unless absolutely necessary. But the main lesions were in the inferior ramus and the circumflex. We started by dilating all these lesions that were heavily calcified. We did use high-pressure balloons. There was a waste in the inferior ramus that eventually resolved after using higher pressure balloon inflations, although there was also some compromise of the flow to the inferior ramus. We then treated the mid-circumflex lesion and also the mid-LAD lesion first before treating the bifurcation. But throughout this case, the patient was having intermittent chest discomfort and ST segment changes, which is not surprising given the left main disease uh, as well as the presence of a left dominant system. Regarding the strategy, we decided to treat the circumflex as the side branch and the ramus as the main distal vessel because it was harder to wire the ramus, the inferior ramus, than the circumflex. So we took a long drag eluting stent from uh, the mid circumflex all the way to the left main. This was deployed and was crushed using a balloon that was placed in the inferior ramus followed by proximal optimization technique with a 4.0 by 8 mm non-compliant balloon. This went well, however, the patient did develop hypotension at this point, and um, we decided to change our strategy. The double kissing crust is a great strategy, but it's time-consuming, and at this point, given the hemodynamic issues, it was urgent to obtain good flow in all the vessels. Therefore, we changed from DK crust to standard crust. We place a stent from the way, uh, all the way from the ostium of the left main into the inferior branch of the ramus. 
and that was deployed, which provided good flow into this uh, Ramos branch. However, there was some pinching of the ostium of the circumflex, either due to calcium or due to thrombus. We were able to rewire and then performed multiple high-pressure balloon inflations, including kissing balloon inflations. We did do intravascular ultrasound that showed that the lesion had subsequently expanded. And a nice final result was achieved with Timothy flow in both the inferior amus as well as the circumflex. The LAD as well as the superior amus did not have any significant compromise and therefore we did not perform any additional dilations or treatment in those vessels. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that when treating left main lesions, but any osteo lesion in general, it is important to intermittently disengage the guide to minimize pressure dampening that could result to ischemia and EKG changes and potentially hemodynamic compromise. The second is that hemodynamic support can be useful in unprotected left mains, although here there was a lima graft to the distal LAD. But because the patient had the left dominant system, he did have some transient hypotension. Also, having hemodynamic support might have allowed us more time and more stability to do a full decay crush than to do the mini crush technique that we eventually used in this case. However, the technique choice for bifurcation lesions should be customized to the patient specifics. In this case, and in this case, it was important to obtain good flow to the left main and its branches urgently. And DK crash does take a lot of time, and that would not be the optimal technique for this purpose. Converting to a standard crash technique allowed more prompt the canalization of the vessels, restoration of good flow, and maintained the patient's hemodynamic stability. Thank you.